try to make sure that we get everybody coming back. So, one, two, three, four, five, not six. Uh, I just got a word that we should go back. Yeah, no, 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 this is our All right, hang on just a second. We've got some less things we'd like. A quick word. Final. Uh, Inspiration. It's about a year and a half ago that a bunch of us lost our friend, Darren Swartz, to suicide after he spent two years being prosecuted by our government for downloading too many academic articles that they said he wanted to share with the third world. By 2016, by election day 2016, by the day when he would have turned 30, I said we were going to raise half of the money for that pack in its first cycle in 2014 in a Kickstarter way. That we'd raise a million dollars in 30 days, and then we'd raise five million dollars in 30 days. No, we had raised a million dollars in 13 days. Two, day, two days ago, we raised a million dollars in a day, and yesterday we raised a million and a half dollars in a day. Dollars at 9:30 last night. Woo! Woo! Yeah! Woo! We will get to Fort Constitution and celebrate a tradition our Constitution began. I'm grateful to you for being here to start this. I'm hopeful this will be as fun as it seems. Let's get the march going. Thank you. Very much. Lewis, part of Occupy Boston, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Here we are on the Massachusetts, Massachusetts, uh, <laughs> New Hampshire Rebellion. Why is it that you're spending your time to come out on a beautiful day and walk 16 miles when you could be having fun? <laughs> well, I am having fun out here walking 16 miles, actually. But I'm out here because we need to do something about this political system. And there's really nothing we can do against any one particular person or group of people. So I just I feel inclined to take action and to get out and to show my support for an idea. Da -da -dum. The rolling back Citizens United decision would be enough. Um, I've been a state rep and as a candidate for state rep for New Hampshire, and we tried, we got through the House with uh, at least a resolution to repeal it, but it died in the Senate, which was Republican dominated, mm -hmm. and so we haven't given it up, but when you see the number of states that have at least put resolutions in, in cities and towns across New Hampshire. We march with love for our country. To honor our granny and sons, we march for the end of corruption, till the will of the people be done. My vote as a, as a, as a citizen, really not having the power that it should have, because the people with money are buying votes and the people in office, by and large, in order to raise the money that they need to survive in office, must either consciously or unconsciously compromise on their legislative voting. There's no way you can make five million. It would never happen. 
to raise children eventually and a lot of the things that I was told as a kid growing up in school that this country stands for I found out as an adolescent that it doesn't actually and that should change um, and I know that there have been a, a lot of people that have been very frustrated with the way that money influences politics and they feel like as a as a small um, contributor um, they really found it difficult to have their voice be heard so I think that um, this idea of New Hampshire Rebellion and the idea of the, the May Day Pack, one of Lessig's other projects, um, are both clever ways to um, have a potential to make a difference. Well, as a journalist, I have been writing about this since 1988. Uh-huh. Uh, this has been a problem for a long time. Money in politics in Money particular? In politics. Okay. Yeah, starting with Watergate, I think, is what really opened people's eyes to it. And then we had campaign finance reform, uh, all of which was co-opted by the system. And the problem with campaign finance reform is that it's always crafted by the, the people who are affected by it. I want a future for my children. I first want to thank the U.S. Coast Guard. The U.S. Coast Guard have just been absolutely tremendous throughout this whole process and they just welcomed us all the way. I also want to thank uh, just everybody who's got these white t-shirts on, which I know there are many. If all the volunteers could just wave, you guys have just been great. I'll, I'll With that, I want to give over to Professor Lesser. So everybody knows the Roger Bannister story. There were studies about the human body to show that it was impossible to run the mile in less than four minutes. And then a guy named Roger Bannister came along who didn't read about what was impossible. He just did it. Now, in the circles of Washington right now, there's a truth. And the truth is that it's impossible to get ordinary Americans to care about the corruption in their government and do anything about it. It's impossible to rally people to vote on the basis of this issue, to show up, to do anything to change it. It's impossible. But I want you to look around. Does this look like impossible to you? 1999, that woman on that poster. Doris Haddock, Granny D. Granny D started a walk. She started in Los Angeles on January 1st, 1999, and 13 months later, 3,200 miles later, she ended up in Washington, D.C. The last mile, she was surrounded by congressmen who had gotten in their cars and driven out to walk with her for these final steps. 
She walked across the country with a sign in her chest that said campaign finance reform. And when she did that, she had no illusion that she was solving the problems of money in politics, but she did believe she was starting something. And this series of impossible steps will get us to that impossible idea of a democracy that actually works again. I am grateful to everybody for being here, for supporting this movement, for showing the impossible is possible, because that's how we win. Thank you. Corruption, the will of the people be done.